Well, according to Canon Asset Managers, the past decade has demonstrated that emerging markets offer economic growth, while developed markets offer earnings growth. We're now joined in studio by Chief Executive at Canon Asset Managers, Adrian Seville, to take us through the investment case for emerging markets. Adrian, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. So context is everything, and probably for the longest time that I've been whether watching the debate or reading the debate around emerging markets, it's always been they are a good case for an investment, and people will you know, give you uh, supporting evidence. I'll say the population growth uh, is looking pretty good, and most of the consumer spending could come from some of these pools of countries that have been put together. When did the, chair, the case for economic growth change? Well, the case for economic growth hasn't changed, and that's the, uh, I guess, the intriguing aspect in this research that we've uh, put out is uh, the case for economic growth in emerging markets is very much alive and well. Mm -hmm. uh, you have young growing populations with uh, rapid gains in productivity, uh, new business models giving rise to Narayana Health and, and Financial, yeah. uh, to give uh, two cases in point, uh, elevated investment levels. Uh, and so emerging uh, market economic growth is very much alive and well. Mm -hmm. The disconnect is that the sort of the textbook assumption then is that, well, if the economies are growing, company earnings will be running along yeah. uh, at a nice rapid pace also. And the simple reality is that, or the data shows that over the last uh, 10 years, that earnings growth has been missing in action. In fact, in many uh, of the uh, emerging markets, earnings growth, despite 10 years of economic growth, earnings, grow earnings are lower. Mm. Uh, than 10 years ago. They've gone backwards whilst the economies have gone forwards. Right. So last year, December, there was that turmoil that affected everybody, especially when you look at the market performance around December. How did the emerging markets perform? Did, were they impacted by that December turmoil or did they, you know, escape relatively unscathed? Well, you know, if we go back to the observations that we've made uh, in, this, uh, in this note that we've put out, uh, you're going to be impacted by market events. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I think that's part and parcel of all capital markets. What we are particularly interested in, what we're making note of, is that the narrative is that, well, the earnings will recover and, uh, you know, you can carry on allocating capital to emerging markets with, with the confidence that that earnings will be driven by population, productivity, um, rising per person income levels. Uh, and that, uh, that simply isn't what is materializing. There's, and there's a number of things that explain this disconnect. Right. Uh, amongst others, you have falling uh, profit margin uh, in uh, large economies like India. So the United States, mm -hmm. uh, although the U.S. displays much lower economic growth, than India, 2% economic growth versus India's 6 mm. or 7. Profit margins in the United States are not only far more stable, they are more elevated. Yeah. And so that translates into US economic growth giving you far better bottom line business performance. And by contrast, Indian economic growth, 7% per annum, mm. but uh, profit margins are far bumpier and falling which means that Indian businesses aren't generating the type of profit or earnings that you would expect. And that then feeds the anxiety amongst market participants, adding to uh, the types of concerns you referencing at the end yeah. of last year. So we've got the trade war, and then in the background we have this excitement around the fact that, well, we might see a Fed cut. Mm. How's all of that playing out or how is it affecting emerging markets? Is there any evidence to the fact that maybe there is something there? Well, you know, I saw a fascinating piece of data uh, just yesterday which shows uh, China's trade performance versus U.S. trade performance. Now, you know, we can debate whether China is still an emerging market. Yeah. Um, but, you know, if, for the sake of illustration, if we could put it into that bucket for the moment, mm -hmm. uh, uh, since the trade war chest beating began, uh, China has experienced a modest decline uh, in export performance. By contrast, the U.S. has, I think it would be dramatic to say it stepped off a cliff, mm. but the U.S. has gone into 
sharp reversal uh, in trade performance. I think that you know, is, is helpful in pointing out a couple of things. The one is just because you say it doesn't cause it or doesn't mm -hmm. make it the case, message to Trump perhaps. Um, and the other is to remind us that you know, when conducting any type of analysis, economic uh, or investment or industrial, we need to first put the facts uh, uh, into, the, into the bucket before we put the beliefs and the arguments uh, into the bucket. So the trade war is without question uh, having an impact. It is not impacting economies equally. It's hurting the U.S. to a far greater extent than China. Um, stepping away from the individual country performance, I would venture that it's reasonable to, to suggest that trade war is going to take about half a percent of economic growth this year. Mm -hmm. um, and if that trade war goes uh, more shrill, uh, sharper, you could probably look to a, as much as a percent being taken off economic growth. And it will be at the headline level, emerging markets that probably bear the, the brunt of that burden because of their elasticities and sensitivities, especially commodity-based right. uh, or trade-based emerging uh, economies, ranging from uh, South Korea, Taiwan, through to Chile. Adrian, thank you so much for your time. And I'd definitely love to have you back in studio so we can talk about this debate as to whether China is an emerging market <laughs> economy or not. Indeed. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. That is the Chief Executive of Canon Asset Managers, Adrian Saville.